Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you how I rendered this uh, skin tight suit looking thing on Bay from Hololive. So, you've probably noticed my uh, voice is very hoarse. I'm sick, I possibly have COVID. But that doesn't mean the content stops, baby. I'm going in and I'm barely functioning in life. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to, despite the illness, try to bring the energy. Um, in this particular artwork, I had a uh, reference of this, like, crazy-looking pose. And I'm pretty sure it was AI, but as I've always said when it comes to uh, referencing AI, I can do it better. And if whether or not I actually do end up doing it better is for anyone to decide, but, you know, I like to think that I do pretty good for, uh, w what it's worth, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, it's definitely a really fun challenge how I rendered this one, and I can't wait to discuss it with you. So, in terms of the pose, we have an emphasis on large hips, and the breasts are just, you know, I, I draw them the large every time, it's, it's kind of my thing. Um, whether or not that's your cup of tea is, is, uh, basically whether or not you'll stick around for this video, or my dumb idiot self-talking but for the most part the pose was very extreme and that was a whole lot of fun um getting it to look right was a little bit challenging but i think i succeeded um here i am planning out the rendering i usually um do it this way just because um as many of you who are regulars on my channel know i can't see things in my head i have aphantasia um so I have to have a reference or something to look at, or I just have to wing it. And usually when I wing it, things go wrong. So for the most part, I just have to kind of look at something and figure it out myself, if that makes sense. So with the goal that's anything skin tight is you want it to kind of shine. If it has a shine to it, it looks tighter. Um, you, you don't want a whole lot of wrinkles, just enough to show a little bit of stretch, if that makes sense. You want stretch, but you don't want full-on... Um, completely skin tight because that isn't realistic you want something in the middle there's a little bit of give in the fabric there's also a lot of lighting that's doing a lot of heavy lifting in this artwork i also something you might not notice the tail you notice how it goes right behind the breast that's on purpose that is to lead the eye back to the breast um does it always work i think it worked for this one um this particular artwork did really really well on twitter and I'm very proud of it. Um, it got over 10,000 likes, which is always awesome. Now, whether or not it does well on YouTube is a whole other ball game, but it's okay. I'm fine with whatever attention it gets because I'm just happy to talk about it. With rendering, I'm starting to uh, make the decision to simplify the way I do hair and rendering and kind of focus more on gradients than I do um, regular uh, multiply layers. And that is a choice I've made because I think it adds to the overall feel and makes it look more complete as an artwork. So, so far we have the basic overall. I might have went overdid the planning phase if I'm being 100% honest, but I think it turned out pretty good if I'm being, being truthful here. Uh, you'll notice I changed the composition by narrowing the canvas, and that was done on purpose because um, it needs to fit the composition a lot better. I also added some uh, post-processing to kind of make it pop a bit to the point where it's borderline a finished artwork, whether or not I actually go in and do line art. And I do that on purpose for the most part. I want to make sure whatever it is I'm doing is going to be a winner before I post it. So now we're on to the line arts. Um, I really, really enjoy line arts. Um, it's, it's a long, arduous process. You'll notice um, with the mouth, I end up changing a few things almost to the point where it looks almost like Konosuba. Which, um, I used to have a friend who absolutely adored Konosuba, so I feel like if we still talked with each other, he would really like this artwork. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things that you, you think about certain things whenever you look at what you're doing and what you're proud of and what you want to do. And for the most part, this particular artwork is something I'm super proud of. Um, I do a little bit of adjustments because I felt like the original proportions of the face weren't quite correct. And that happens. Um, sometimes you have to go in and you have to make little fixes. It's just the way of life. Um, artworks are kind of a journey from beginning to end. At least that's uh, what I personally believe. I actually have a, another artwork uh, that's already finished that I'm currently in the process of finishing. 
and by finishing, I mean finishing the video for it. The, uh, the video itself is um, of Hansun Miku, who I don't get to draw very uh, much, but Miku is one of those characters that I really love to draw because I love the color blue. And any time I get to do the color blue is a freaking win for me, I'll tell you what. Um, I, I like drawing hair messy, so you'll notice there's a, that the hair is very messy, and that is by design. I really, really enjoy it. Um, we are starting to get to the point where we get to make the hair wild. I may go in and start going, going to do the breasts here pretty soon, but I'm kind of following the path I've created for myself with the hair. And you're not going one-to-one -one with what's there. You want to kind of spread it out a bit and change and make little things. Um, a trick that may help you with drawing messier hair is to use, draw them on separate layers to make sure that you can erase only what you're currently working on. So we now have that wild and crazy look, which I absolutely love. It's so good. I love wild and crazy. Um, we are now doing the arm. And I do little fixes on the arm and add some tension points where the wrinkles are so that the wrinkles look a lot better. I also uh, really pay attention to how I do the uh, hand here. Even though the hand is going to be blurred, we still want it to look correct. You'll notice that whenever I draw the breasts, I imply a stretch mark with the lines, and we are going to make that make sense during the rendering. So the point of the lines is to guide the rendering. At least that's how I've always seen it. Now, other people have different ways of doing it. Some people don't do line art, and that's perfectly okay. If you don't want to do line art, there's tons of ways to render that don't involve drawing line art. I just personally really enjoy it. Um, we add squish, squish on the uh, tights because everybody likes squish. Boy or girl, you like squish on your man, you like squish on your women. Squish is great. So now we're going to start adding the base colors, and that's going to happen really fast. Um, the goal with adding base colors is to choose very neutral colors that are somewhere in the middle in terms of saturation. Same with the uh, tights here. So now here we go. We're doing the hair now. Just following what we have. Let the lines guide you. There we go. Now we're starting to get it. There's the hair. The different colored hues. Now we're adding the tail. And now it's time to start rendering. Here we go. So this is going to happen very quick. Heads up. I'm going to try to keep up with uh, what I'm doing. We're using the selection pen to create a gradient that makes more sense. And we're just kind of adding these lines here, implying a stretch mark. Shadow of the other breast hitting the other breast. And now we're using the selection pen again. You'll notice I imply the movement of the, um, of the uh, torso. We're using that selection pen a lot. The selection pen's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Woo! Sick, sick, sick. So I add a little uh, shadow and light spot here to kind of imply the nipple, but not actually show it. It's definitely uh, something that is more implied, if anything. So now we're doing the uh, tights, and we're just using a basic thing. We're going to use a texture here as well to kind of add more realism to it. And you'll notice that the shines are very um, sharp, and that's by design. So now we're doing the uh, skin right here. Little details added. We're going to use the tonal curve to kind of add more color back into it later. Using gradients on the hand. Just doing whatever we can to imply things. There we go. Now it's starting to look good. Little adjustments to the face. There's, there's the tight uh, texture I was talking about. There we go. Now I'm doing some level correction to kind of make it look a bit more correct. And we're using the gradient here on the hair, which is going to do most of the heavy lifting for making the hair look good. And there's the shine, making it look nice and luminous, luminescent. Now we're adding some post-processing and some added colors. Now we're doing the eyes. And overall, the color balance in this particular artwork is really, really good. I'm super proud of it. We're adding a uh, add glow and some tonal curve to kind of glue all the colors together. And there's some extra 
adding some blur, hard light layer, and some chromatic abrasion. And there we go. There's the finished artwork. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.